Welcome back. I have Brian Sullivan here with me today. You're talking about bullying earlier, and uh, I, I think the the biggest bully on the school board is Mr. Matthews. Amen. Yeah, Mr. Matthews should be ashamed. He should resign uh, along with a few others. Did you know? So there's a, a parent in the district, but her kids are not in the district, but she still lives in the district. And so she gets up and speaks because she's like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Well, she said something on social media that Michael Matthews did not like, specifically about his church. Somehow he found out that she had a husband. Somehow he found out who her husband was and what he did. And he emailed this man's bosses and tried to get them to put pressure on her husband, to put pressure on her to publicly apologize to his church. Yeah, I did hear that. You are correct. And it's, you know, and that's, that's not a, that's not an abuse of power. Right. But say a board member was touring a school and made a comment about maybe being a sub someday to the principal and the other board members, and now all of a sudden that's abusive? Right. Yeah. I, I say he's a he's the biggest bully they have up there is because he starts off when it gets to the public input section, and he says things like uh, cheering, snapping, clapping, and other distractions are not allowed during or upon completion of any public comment. But I've seen this happen numerous times throughout the board meeting when they parade their little ponies up there and say this, and, and they all clap, and they all, you know, yes, and, and they, but not one thing is said. But he, he wants to silence the citizens that have the right to come up and voice their opinion. Uh, it, he, he's blatantly sticking his middle finger up at every single person that wants to have an opinion. Yeah. He's blatantly disregarding the First Amendment. A hundred percent. My husband got up and spoke, and he was speaking just as a general public comment about they claim that taking these books out of the school libraries is a violation of someone's First Amendment. And he's like, this is not a violation of the First Amendment. This is a morality issue. This isn't violating anybody's freedom of speech. You are violating my freedom of speech by not letting me come in and read this. But that's oblivious to them. Don't, don't look at that. Don't pay attention to that part. Everything's fine. The boat's not sinking. Right. I, I always wonder, they want these books in there, but they don't want them read. What, what's the difference if you read them to a kindergartner through a, a 12th grade student that may, may happen to be there at the council meeting or if you read them to the people on the board i mean what what's the difference it, there is none so why my question is well why not why not have like uh actual pornography in there why not have videotapes why not have playboys or or stuff i mean what's the difference where do you stop at yeah. i mean what where's the line that you've crossed i think they've crossed that line yeah and unfortunately, the state of Colorado gives them protection to allow this. Uh, somehow this doesn't meet obscenity laws, and it's mind-blowing. Uh, there was a book that was challenged, uh, The God of Small Things, and it had been decided by the book committee to be kept in, and so, of course, the superintendent decided to keep it in as well. The other ironic thing is, is they have their lawyer, Nathan Fall, gives them legal advice, but the gentleman doesn't know the difference between legislator and legislature. <laughs> um, doesn't know who the representatives are, just the ones that, you know, he works with, like Mary Young, who mm. are parading around this crap. So they get advice from him about the legal ramifications that might happen if these books are taken out. But we have, we have in neighboring districts school board member went in and said no this crap is gone took the book with them left so, no this book is not available to these children anymore like <laughs> that's what we need that's yes. that's what we need but yet we have this little um this lawyer guy telling them oh no no the legal ramifications and that's what they're more concerned about is the legal ramifications and not um the emotional and mental trauma that this is probably going to cause to cause children yeah 
Yeah, it's a breakdown of our society. With the uh, recent decision of keeping a god of small things in the library, I appealed the decision despite it being futile. It's a waste of time. <laughs> but, and I knew that they wouldn't let me talk about the things that I had a problem with in the boardroom. I knew they weren't. So I sent them all an email with it. And I said the words were inappropriate and disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting in this book. I said it to them. And then I felt like felt like I needed to go take a shower. <laughs> like I felt like <laughs> I just couldn't imagine a ninth grade girl getting her hands on this book and reading about this stuff. I mean, it's absolutely vulgar and disgusting. It's about a brother and sister who essentially have like some kind of a sexual mm affair and they talk about um how they both came from the same mother um and they describe the mom's area with a very vulgar word and i'm just befuddled because as a mom i would put soap in my children's now <laughs> if they talked about me like that yeah. and i would assume every mother up there and every father up there would do yep. the exact same thing but yet no it's okay this is cool well it's cool because of it's not white people doing it. It's another race. It's another culture. And this is their ways. This is what's inclusive. And it's it's mind-blowing that, I, I don't know, I feel like, you know, this is probably a whole other topic, um, but we need some of these other cultures to come in and say, no, you will not perceive my culture, my religion, my views in this disgusting way. Right. I think the the Muslim, I can't remember where it was. There was a Muslim mom that got up and spoke. And I, I want to say it was in uh, uh, Michigan somewhere. Uh, I could be wrong. But yeah, she got up and she said, that's that's disgusting. That's not what fits our, our family or our beliefs. And I don't know. We need more people of ethnic, ethnic backgrounds, uh, races. What have you? I mean, mothers, fathers. I mean, I know a lot of a lot of the mothers in District Six have have taken taken point on this, and kudos to you guys. Um, but we do need we need more dads to be yeah. outspoken. Yeah. We do, and I think we just need um, as a society to be call me homophobic. I don't yep. care. Call me yep. transphobic. Uh, there's a weird. I pick that bit out. There's a trans man. I think. I don't even know what he is. I'm here in town who said that when during one of the school board debates, I was asked about trans and my face puckered. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know where, unless I'm like eating a lemon head, I, my face doesn't typically pucker. <laughs> I probably rolled my eyes because if, if it's the one I remembered, of course, I wasn't exactly sure which one he was talking about, but if it was the one I uh, remembered, they were talking about how to make lgbt kids feel included in the classroom and it's like why aren't we just making kids feel included why are we focusing on one set of kids if this is all natural and this is all normal if we just make all kids feel included then there's no reason anybody should feel excluded like it doesn't right. make any sense and so um and and it i think had some mental health aspect to it too which you know if anything like i said i my eye that whole, um, or that whole question, but I don't care. Call me transphobic, homophobic, yeah, racist, bigot. I don't care anymore. No, go right ahead. That that's been a, a I think the thing of the left uh, is to we're going to call you a name. We're we're going to put you under this umbrella, and uh, you're you're going to see the consequences of it either in your job or in in just the personal realm of things and people don't like to be be called those names but that's where they've scared the people with morals and i i honestly think that it's kind of just kind of in the times that we're living in with we can all agree we're in revelations right now yep um we're no different than what the situation was in sodom and gomorrah and it's unnerving in that aspect that we've gotten that bad because there there isn't a lot of morals left um, and it, 
really concerning, especially because like this whole thing is when they're coming after our kids, when they're intentionally targeting our children to try and, and get it point. When I was in high school, there was this huge issue. Uh, high school, I can't remember where, had provided condoms uh, after prom. And I said, well, big deal, you know? Like, at least they were being safe, you know, kind of mentality. But now, as an adult, I was, who is my ever-loving mind? Yeah, they've taken God out of the schools. Not that it was totally in it, but, you know, they, they've taken the morality and, and God and God-fearing things out of school and they've replaced them with filth we totally corrupted it to try and prey on young innocent children you know we know are not mentally developed enough to be able to make these decisions and understand some of these consequences right like in the court of law if you're tried as a juvenile you are given a little leniency no one but makes them perfect target i think you've hit on it though it's uh, i've i read somewhere that your uh your brain isn't developed till you're like 24 your decision making and in your that part of it isn't quite an adult brain yet yeah. till 24 so you know I, I look at that and i think man they, they're not giving the kids a chance no so and they're damaging they're stunting that growth as yeah. well I would like to know. I know there's probably people on on the school board or whoever listen to this and report back to their uh, handlers, but uh, I, I would like to know. Truly, they got all this equipment to listen at the school board meetings and the video cameras, and they installed police both in uniform and undercover and armed security. Right, and, and so. What what was the buildup? What was the reason? What what made them do that? Because I never heard of anybody getting assaulted or verbally or, uh, you know, anything of the sort. I think it was just a, a okay. This is what we're going to label you guys as uh, the people, the citizens that want to come up and talk and view and and tell everybody their opinion. They didn't like it, so they decided to. Uh, label us as troublemakers, as terrorists, or, you know. The last board meeting, um, I wasn't able to go to the one just last Monday, but the one before that, um, they don't have the armed security anymore. So whatever built up to it has died down enough that they've been able to lax a little bit on some other security. But, I mean, if, if I could take a stab in the dark as to what the buildup was, what the tipping point for them was the um, turning in of the book complaints. Um, they felt like they were ambushed with it. And I think they thought that we were sitting at the board meetings whispering to each other, this is what we're going to do, right, everybody? You know, like they thought that we were there doing it. Um, and so I think they were hoping that they could listen in and try to, I don't know, halt it. But I think it was because in us turning it in and all of those, because um, the footage doesn't show them actually dropping the documents down. The district's footage. There's actual footage that shows that in there. You can hear the papers right. hitting, papers hitting, papers hitting, papers hitting, papers hitting. And I think that it was, uh, it took them, it made their masks slip a little bit, you know, that everything's fine, everything's perfect, the boat is not sinking. Uh, and I think that this was their way to try to prevent it and to stop that, um, you know. Yeah, the public should be adamantly pissed off that they wasted, the school board wasted thousands of dollars. I don't know how many thousands of dollars it took. It's somewhere but... about 20 that was just for the equipment installation because the the technology that they got with the cameras has uh, facial recognition. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure that's not cheap. You should be very, very angry that the board took your money, stole your money, I should say, and they put it into something that, that they didn't need to. So our school board meetings would have three or four armed security guards 
the head of security, his assistant, and then the other assistant that they hired, the John Gage retiring. Um, and then three, two to three um, GPD officers, okay, at a board meeting. That's what they had. Currently, statistically, there's only 0.75 school resource officers for each school. Hmm. So those board meetings are more protected than what our children are, the ones who are supposed to matter the most. And that's scary. Yeah. They, they are more concerned about a couple of adults who should be able to handle themselves, right? But they got Michael Matthews, Kyle Bentley. That gets escorted out of the board meetings. Jeez, that's pathetic. The police escorting. But then there's, you know, Rob Norwood and Taylor Sullivan who don't right. need that. Yeah, Teresa Myers, whose communications gets escorted out. That's insane to me. Yeah. That's our tax dollars. You feel like you're more important right. and more valuable than our children. That's right. that's what that tells me. It does. And it... that's disgusting. And, and you're right. Parents, taxpayers, everybody should be livid about that, um, especially when we understand and know the increased mental illness issues that are causing these attacks on our school yeah. you would think that they would go above and beyond to to find the money to allocate money and resources and, and so on and so forth um to the schools to be able to have more sros but it, it's mind-blowing to me that we have school board members administrators who feel like they need a, an escort out oh actually brenda campos spits said that she was scared for her life because someone told her that she was a baby killer because she went to the COVID vaccine. I don't understand how that equates to you're going to get murdered. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Brian, for coming and speaking with me today. Thank you guys for joining us this week. We will be back next week. Please feel free to reach out. We are on Twitter at Schoolhouse Croc. Without the K at the end, we are on YouTube at Schoolhouse Croc with the K at the end. And you can contact us via email at stacy4d6 at gmail.com. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.